All right. So let's talk about uh, how to use Splunk to get ransomware on Windows, because I was just going through this today, and it was uh, very different than it used to be. So you install Splunk on Windows, that's easy. You just go download Splunk and install it like any other software. So let me make that a little smaller. All right. So that works fine. And when you're done, you have Splunk running. And uh, like a lot of software, it just uses a browser for the GUI, like a lot of open source type software. So when you load Splunk, it doesn't have any data except some internal logs about Splunk itself. So you have to go to add data to add some data. And you can add local data, like uh, performance monitors. This uh, You can add present processor information about your machine it's running on, and you can add Windows logs. They're sitting here, application system and security logs, and the other logs are right there. So you can put in the normal Windows event logs, and that gets you started. So that's the bare minimum of getting Splunk moving. But to detect interesting things, you have to have um, Sysmon. Sysmon is the boss tool, a Microsoft tool from SysInternals, now part of Microsoft. And this takes a customizable group of events and puts them into a special event pool, which is easy to incorporate into um, Sysmon, into Splunk. And here, um, Swift on Security, the famous Twitter celebrity, is an expert of this and made a very good uh, configuration file you can use here. So you download that file, you install Sysmon, and then you just run it with this command line. Uh, this installs Sysmon and that gets the configuration. So now a whole bunch of default events will be loaded. And Sysmon is going to just load Windows events. And the main thing you use to identify Windows events is the event ID. And uh, if you do Windows tech support, you get used to these event ID numbers and it's the main way you uh, you hunt through event logs. So the first thing to understand how Sysmon works is to just look at it in Event Viewer. And you have to dig down through Event Viewer to find it, application and services logs. You finally get down to Sysmon Operational. And now what it is, is just a carefully selected subset of Windows event logs that are of importance for security. So here's 22 is a DNS query. And so if you create an EXE file, um, Sysmon with the Swift on security is looking for any EXEs that are created because those are often uh, the beginning of malware infections. So if you create an EXE file, you will see an event 11 occur, which shows that a file was created and it includes the complete path to the file and the process that launched it and so on. So that's cool. And you can filter events in event viewer and get down to that specific event so that's a flag just to, to get you started so you understand what Sysmon is doing. The next step is putting the data from Sysmon into Splunk. And there is a Splunk add-on for Sysmon, but it doesn't seem to work anymore. I tried using it earlier today, so we just do it manually. So when you get in here, you have to go into settings data inputs, and then you have to scroll through a very inconvenient window here, which if you do Windows tech support, you get used to this happening. A lot of Windows um, GUI windows will have a little tiny window for a huge long list of things that you can barely scroll through, and this Splunk is that way. So it's hard to scroll through, but you can eventually find Microsoft Windows Sysmon operational here and select it. So you get the Sysmon data into your Splunk. And once you've got it there, you can then look for periods of excessive file creation. Now, the thing that I spent a lot of last night and a lot of this morning struggling with is they've taken away all the useful information from Sysmon in the latest version. Event ID is not there, and event description is not there anymore. I have no idea why. This seems completely insane. But as far as I can tell, it changed about a year ago. And I suspect it may have something to do with the migration from Python 2 to Python 3 that's going on. And it may be reversed. But in the meantime, for some ungodly reason, Microsoft's event ID is renamed event code. And you don't have the description anymore. So you have to write your queries by event code, which makes it a little more user hostile than it used to be. But you can still do what needs to be done here. And by configuring a query to look for event code 11, you can count the number of file creation events per minute with stream stats. 
And so you can make something here that will tell you if more than 10 EXEs were created in a minute. And I, you could also count other kinds of files. And that's one way to detect uh, ransomware. If new EXEs, more than 10 are created in one minute, then it'll be picked up here. And so then I just made a file you can download and unzip that makes a bunch of EXEs to trigger it. So you can see that it works. So that's kind of fun. And another thing that, um, that Sysmon does by default is notice if you have a run key, because run keys are often how malware relaunches. So if you make a run key here and just call it bad program, um, it will detect that. It'll detect any new run keys that are added and you can find that. So those are the simplest couple of things you can do uh, to see security events with Splunk and Sysmon. And there are many, many, many more of them and a very active community writing them. Although um, as far as I can tell, most of the legacy queries don't work with the modern versions of Sysmon, but hopefully that will get straightened out in the future. Anyway, let me stop this one.